Well, hello and welcome to Island Reaction. I am Cameron Cooper, your host for tonight. Uh, I am going to uh, be making, preparing for you. Uh, I'm going to have to readjust my camera, sorry guys. But uh, I'm going to be preparing for you some uh, Vietnamese coffee. Uh, known in Vietnamese as coffee sada. And this is the number one brand of coffee out of Vietnam to be used for coffee sada, which is very famous in almost any Vietnamese restaurant you would ever go to anywhere in the world. This is probably going to be your number one brand, uh, Trung Nguyen. Trung Nguyen, number one coffee. Speaking of which, um, Vietnam actually is, I read this recently, getting ready to do this, show prep, that Vietnam is the second largest exporter of coffee in the world. Didn't know that. For a smaller country. So, um, now you'll notice I'm actually drinking some wine while I'm making some coffee soda, which we'll go into more of the details here in a minute. But, uh, so we have our coffee from Vietnam, uh, Trung, Trung Nguyen. And this is called a thin, uh, Vietnamese one, I don't know what that means exactly. This is a thin filter. This one actually, I believe it says that it's a French filter, which is similar to like a French press, but it's a French drip, no press. Well, there's a slight press, but it's not really like the original French press coffee machine. So uh, you can pick these up in most Asian markets. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna be using that. The other ingredient is gonna be uh, sweet and condensed milk, and there's many brands. Longevity is, I, what I've been reading, is longevity is the most desired, most popular that people like to use. Um, this is actually Napa Original, probably made in the U.S. Let's see, it's got some Chinese writing on it. Let's see, where's my glasses? Hang on, guys. Actually is made in, distributed in Fremont, California, but as far as where it's made at, made in the U.S.A. There you go, made in the U.S.A. But because it's so popular in the Vietnamese community, Asian community, specifically for coffee soda, or Vietnamese coffee, you'll notice that it's actually written in Vietnamese language, coffee soda. And underneath that, it's written in Chinese. So, made in the USA, marketed for the Asian community, specifically for the Vietnamese, because of coffee soda. And why not? Because, like I said, Vietnam is the second largest exporter of coffee in the world. So, why there's not more of this? Probably there's a lot of variations. Starbucks probably has a version of this in Asia that they call coffee soda. And whether they have it here, they're probably copying a lot of versions of this original recipe, adding lots of different this and that's and flavors in their own roasted bean and things like that. But uh, I would say probably Starbucks and all their delicious drinks, they probably ripped off. No offense, Starbucks, I love your product, but I'm sure you got it from somewhere. You've ripped off the coffee soda from uh, 100 years ago or more, probably 200 years ago or more maybe 400 years ago, the coffee soda recipe. And you added this or that, and there you've got it. But it's still going strong in the original uh, form at any Vietnam, uh, Vietnam. Vietnam is the mom of the Vietnamese, Vietnam. So with that said, uh, we've got a few cans of that. Not that I'm gonna use all these, but I'm actually getting this because I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna switch my coffee drink that I take to work with me. Okay, so there's there's that. So I got this instead of buying a whole bunch of pre-made cans and little cans like that that I like. Or I'm trying to get away from Red Bulls. No offense, Red Bulls, I love you. Love your wings. Um, but uh, it's just a lot of extra stimuli and calories because I gotta have the one for sugar, not the, not the sugar-free. Um, doesn't have the same wings. Those sugar-free wings just don't. They're like this. Here's sugar-free wings on, on Red Bulls. There's your wings. You get the regular Red Bull. Okay? Big difference. They won't tell you that, though. 
So there we've got it. Three key ingredients besides the water in the glass and the ice that I don't have here yet, but I'm going to go get it in a second. You get your Trung, Wen, coffee, Vietnamese. You want to make sure, guys, don't use don't use coffee from somewhere else. If you really want a true Vietnamese coffee, coffee sada, um, get real Vietnamese coffee. And you can get it at probably, there's a lot of uh, major supermarkets that might carry this. I haven't checked because I go to the Asian market all the time, so I just know it's there, so I get it. It may be at Walmart for all I know, but this is a major brand in the Asian community. So very, most likely, it's probably in Walmart or some of your major stores chains. Uh, this as well, it may not have the Vietnamese writing and Chinese writing on there, but probably going to see the sweet and condensed milk. It's made in the USA, so uh, they don't have to, to import that from Vietnam because we know how to do that. we got a lot of cows, probably more than they do. And this here, uh, it's probably made in the U.S. or France. Let's find out. It's called the French Coffee Filter. Uh, like I said, it's actually made in Taiwan. But uh, the actual Vietnamese uh, name for this style of coffee filter maker is called uh, Thin, P-H-I-N. What that word means in Vietnamese, I don't know. But it's a French coffee filter. And uh, now I don't know all my history, but I do know that there's a direct and intimate relationship of the French and the Vietnamese at what era, what year, if it's part of the Vietnam War or pre-Vietnam War. But there, uh, there was a, uh, I believe, an influx of French people, probably going to go back to colonial days, would be my guess, or pre-100 years, um, of the French colonizing in the Vietnam islands and country. And uh, so you have a lot of French Vietnamese, and and to this day, their influencers are still there, probably in their architect, their food. Um, in every part of their culture, probably, you're going to find the influence of the French in Vietnam. As far as uh, maybe the wording, and maybe this was a type of press that before it hit Vietnam, it was something that was used in France. I don't know. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing that much research to show you how to make a delicious cup of coffee. Iced coffee, you can make it hot. I'm showing you the iced version of Vietnamese coffee, officially known as Café Suda. And uh, without further ado, let's get today's video underway. If you have not clicked and subscribed, please do so and give us a like. I'm going to uh, get our water ready. It's almost ready. Our glass is ready. And uh, it's very basic, very simple. Just a few key things to keep in mind. So before I do that, I think I'm going to set this over here. I need to check and see if you guys can actually see me. Um, I hope so. Let's find out. I think you can, but you got to be able to see. I'm going to move this a little bit, guys. Sorry for the camera motion here. I'm going to move this down like that so you can see that much of where I'm working at with my items. And maybe I need to sit down so that you guys can see me so I'm not standing tall. I'm not walking tall. I think if I sit down, be a little bit lower. That's going to be about right. Here. So we're going to get today's video underway with our Vietnamese coffee, coffee Sudan. You are look, you are watching uh, Island Reaction. I am Tamara Cooper, your host, your chef, and um, we are going to get this underway. Now I'm not going to mix my coffee, but the thing is. It is a little bit time consuming, more so than just like picking up your percolator and pouring a cup and throwing some cream and sugar in it. But believe me, the first time I ever had this coffee soda, I was a fan forever. One cup is all it took. And I would go searching for anywhere I was at that was away from where I initially. Um, 
met this delicious coffee drink. And we'll go into this wine. I'll do a little side side review on my wine later. Because I have found one that I like. The key thing I like about it, it's a red wine, which I prefer over the white wines. Um, and I like what you would consider um, smooth velvet uh, texture. It's wet, it's smooth, velvet. It's not dry, it doesn't bite, it doesn't <laughs> exasperate. So um, I found this one and it actually said it on the on the box. It's a box wine. One of the higher end ones, but um, it actually says it on there that it was velvety or velvet texture. Something like that. I'll, I'll bring the box out. We'll do a little side review, but first, let's get on to our coffee. And thanks again, guys, for watching here at the Island Reaction. I am Cameron Cooper. I am your host, and um, you are going to witness one of the best coffee drinks and how to do it. I've been doing this for years, but I haven't done it for a while. Um, years, actually. But when I first was introduced to this, I said, I have to learn how to, I just can't go to the market or the restaurant every day and buy one of these, because they're not cheap, I would say. When you go to Denny's, you go, hey, give me a cup, give me a, a cup of uh, a cup of Joe. You know, probably a couple, a cup of Joe's, a couple of bucks. Well, this is going to be more than that. I'm going to say probably, look at your $5 mark for a coffee sudab, Vietnamese coffee. $5 mark for, for one of those servings. And if you could, Compare that to Starbucks. This was going on years before Starbucks was even in business. I was drinking these and paying probably five dollars for a serving of this before before Starbucks was even uh, a thought in somebody's brain, and it was worth every cent then. And they're still not that much higher. I'm guessing probably five or six bucks. And it's been a while since I purchased one in a restaurant, um, but it's, it's just worth every penny. And I'm telling you, I I love Starbucks. They have a great blend. I don't know their history and where they get their beans and their blends and all this, but it's a it's a totally aromatic bean and grind and uh, and flavor and aroma. I am not. I'm just jealous that I didn't come up with it or something. But it's it's, it's terrific. I love Starbucks. The only thing I don't really like about Starbucks is that they're so commercialized and they're on every corner in every neighborhood for every economic, uh, you know, demographic. Um, and there's just some neighborhoods where you really don't need a Starbucks. There's people that, you know, they don't need to be spending $6 for a cup of coffee in some of these neighborhoods that they stick a Starbucks in. And, uh, but they're going to do it. And with their EBT debit card, or the food stamp, they're going to go to that Starbucks and buy their six, seven dollar coffee drink. And that's the last thing you should be doing. The Starbucks sticks them right there in your face. Come and get it. Come and get it. I don't like that. Now, I know they do a lot of good socially, uh, worldwide kind of things to help help uh, a lot of causes. Probably global warming, I bet they, the rainforest and stuff like that. They're, they're big on that. I'm sure they promote it and they make t-shirts and coffee mugs and stuff like that. Once again, it's a great, it's a great concept. It's a great company. It's a great flavor. It's a great product. Um, but I just don't stand behind them on where they go sometimes. And other than that, you love you Starbucks. But I'm going to show you how to get something that's you don't need to go to Starbucks anymore. You can do this right at home, and you can even put it in an empty water bottle. You can make it with the water, uh, make it with the water in the water bottle, plastic water bottle make the water, make it with the water from the bottle, <laughs> have another glass of wine, Cameron, um, and then when the bottle's empty, then you make your coffee so down, you're beating this coffee, and once it's cooled, so it's not going to melt the, uh, the bottle, pour it into your uh, plastic water bottle, cap it, and you can put it in the freezer, you have enough space in there so it doesn't expand too much, and uh, take it out to work with you in your lunchbox, or keep, just keep it cold in the refrigerator, keep it in your ice box, in your uh, lunch box, I should say, your little igloo thing or whatever you have. And, uh, and you're going to have it with it. You can just open it up and sip on it and 
And, you, and virtually, um, I have to think, I think these were probably, this is $1.99. They have some that are almost $3. Longevity brand is probably close to the $3. Uh, I honestly couldn't tell you the difference. It's probably made in the USA also, but it's got an, it, instead of cows, it's got like a Fu Manchu on there and more Asian writings, and they call it longevity. So they charge you an extra dollar for that label. Made in, made in Wisconsin, in Iowa, okay? But people pay for that. Longevity, oh, I want longevity, and I want Asian. It's made in the USA. Now, this was uh, seven bucks, six ninety nine. Okay, it's a little, it's so cheaply made from some machine presses, stainless steel, it'll last forever. It's not like, you know, well, it's going to wear out and then I'll have to buy another one. It's not like that. This thing here that I rolled my cigarettes with, eventually it wear, wear out, will wear out and I will buy another one for $6, $8, whatever I paid for it. But right now it's probably going on close to a year. And they do give some replacement parts, but usually you lose them before you actually need them, unless you would tape it to it. Um, so, and uh, and then your Vietnamese coffee, which I want to point out to you right there, look on the label. It says, made in Vietnam. It is true Vietnamese coffee. And like I said, the coffee has everything to do with the whole drink and the flavor and the aroma. So you do want to get a good one. And I would say 99% of the restaurants anywhere in the United States or possibly anywhere in the world, um, they're going to be using this Trung Nguyen brand. It's probably a little bit more expensive than some of the other ones. So if they're doing uh, high volume and they're trying to save money on high quantity, now they'll go switch to something cheaper that's not quite as good, but throw a little extra sugar in there or something, I don't know. But uh, go with this. Vietnam, second largest in, uh, exporter, exporter of coffee in the world. So with that being said, I'm going to go get my water, my glass, and we're going to make this son of a bee. So bear with me. And like I said, we'll, we'll go into a little short wine review after this, but I did find one that's really likable. And hello to everybody out there. I don't have a chat up or anything like that to chat with you guys. I do need to plug my, my cord in so that make sure you guys don't uh, disconnect via the battery. So I'll be right back, guys. Thanks for watching us here at Island Reaction. I am Cameron Cooper, and we are making Vietnamese coffee today. So I'm going to shake a little bit while I plug this in, make sure we don't lose our connectivity. And I'll be right back with uh, the rest of our items that we need to make this delicious drink. Besides the items that, hopefully I picked that back here so you can see it. Besides the items which I just showed you, and I will show it all again here real quick. Before we put it together. Get it all laid out there. And I think I need to sit so that I'm, I think I'm out of frame here a little bit. And here we have our... 
uh, basic tumbler glass. I don't know if that's called a tumbler, but it's a drinking glass. And, and I had it in the freezer with ice all the way up to the top. And we have a teaspoon here. And uh, we've plated it for uh, a nice presentation for all of our wonderful viewers there at Island Reaction. And thanks again for watching. We appreciate that. Click and subscribe if you have not. Watch all of our videos at least 1,000 times each. And do that as quickly as possible. Okay? We appreciate that. Now. We're going to go ahead and... Um, i got to get a can opener for the cream. And we're going to unbox this. This is totally sanitary now. And the hot water is so hot it would kill anything that would, all, would be on it anyway. So I'm not going to kill it. I don't really need to kill germs twice. My water is literally boiling, so I don't have to worry about decontaminating this. It's never been opened before. And then we're going to open our coffee. So let's don't over stack this stuff in front of you guys. So like that. So we're going to get this going, and then we're going to go get our water. Because the water basically is the last thing you're going to put in once you get all this sort of together. So let's get our can opener, make sure our water's at the boiling temperature, and we'll be right back, guys. with this and then I'm going to go into a wine review. I think this is a good opportunity to go ahead and refresh my drink. And uh, like I said, we are going to do a brief wine review on this fabulous uh, red wine after we finish this terrific, in-your-face, strong, powerful, aromatic, delicious Vietnamese coffee drink. And I uh, want to hey, uh, make, make a shout out there for a, I think I'm about right. I'm a little bit lower. Maybe I'm in frame. I'll make sure I bring this up to make sure you guys can see everything that you need to. Hey, Dennis! I wanted Dennis to stop over while I'm doing it because Dennis actually is a Vietnam War veteran and he spent, he spent some time there in Vietnam uh, back in the, the 60s. And, uh, I want him to stop over, and he's had this many times, and he eats uh, frequently or infrequently at some local Vietnamese restaurants and has for probably... Hey, Dennis! Are you going to make an appearance? Are you going to make an appearance for my uh, Vietnamese coffee? Uh, yeah, there, there. Okay. All right. Well, stop over when you can. All right, he'll stop over with us later. Um, so that's good. So, uh, and where was I? So anyway, I'll bring these things up. But I don't know about my camera. I don't have my assistant, darling wife. I don't have her here uh, sort of managing me right now, so I'm sort of doing this on, on my own. And uh, so uh, we're going to do the best we can, but I'm going to make sure I bring things up to a level where you guys can see them. This is our, our uh, glass of ice and all of our ingredients short of the water because that's the last thing we put in and I want to keep it in there hot and just uh, reheating it slightly at the, the microwave so that the uh, eight ounces of water is going to be at the appropriate temperature to do what we need to do and honestly if your water was not boiling you're still going to make a delicious drink it would just be a little less strong it would be a uh, consider like if you use cold water, you probably wouldn't get much 
reaction from the coffee grind, but you would get some. It would just be a weaker blend of your drink. And if you had it warmer, then it's going to get more concentrated as far as the coffee concentration. Now, one thing I want to tell you um, that I have read, and I, I'm speaking from experience because it will, it will keep you going for quite a while. This coffee and this type of approach to preparing it, and I don't know if you put this in a coffee, regular coffee maker, if it would be any different, but this particular way of making this drink, um, it is a higher concentration of uh, flavor and caffeine. So this is going to have more kick to it than just a normal cup of dough at dinner. It's going to be a lot more flavor, more intense. The sweetened condensed milk is going to lower that and balance it down and take away some of that acidity that is more extreme than in your Denny's coffee or probably even your Starbucks coffee. It's going to have more acidity, it's more caffeine, it's a stronger blend. Um, so with that in mind, like James would say over at uh, Mike P.I. Dream in the Philippines, and without further ado, let's get today's video underway. See you, James. Kudos to you and your growing wife. And we love your house. We love your build. If you guys have never checked out my PI here, my PI dream, James over there in the Philippines did a wonderful build and documented every day from basically from getting the plan, buying the land clearing it and every day and it was like I don't know probably close to 300 videos and it just documents and he's he's a he's a former engineer I think with the fire department and retired and he's a very uh, very intelligent guy and he just he was very on top of his build I don't think I would do that when we do our build but um, just because I'm not quite like that and he's an engineer so I know he's very hands on and very involved and um, but he was, at, at the same time, very trustworthy of all of his uh, people that he was relying on to do the build. So uh, here's to you, James, and my PIP. As well as happy retired in the Philippines, and uh, Lynn and Anthony in the Philippines, you guys, if you're watching, we watch your shows. They're a lot of fun. They teach us so much, and we're basically going to be doing what you're doing going to be a few years down the road. So kudos to you guys and thanks for uh, doing a lot of the work for us. So our, our build is going to be that much easier, relocation and um, everything like that. Really making it uh, something to look forward to. Thank you. So that was really an end, but I just wanted to speak to those guys if they're watching. And Anthony, if you're still over there in the Chicago area, I hope you're getting over this thing and get through this. I hope you can get back to the Philippines to your family, to your wonderful family. And I wish you well and, and hope you get back over there soon. I'm sure you miss them so much. So, all right, so what we're going to do is the first thing, we've got our glass of ice. And it's nice and cold, so it's not, uh, it's not hot outside right now. I think we're at a nice 80 degrees. So uh, this was in the freezer already cold, so it's not like melting or anything yet. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to push this aside for a second. We're going to open can opener, a little piece of paper right there. We're going to open our condensed milk, sweetened condensed milk. This is where I probably need some napkins. So let's get one right over here. How about underneath it? We're going to open our uh, sweetened condensed milk. Now that will need to be washed because at least ran under hot water because it's got the sweet and thin smoke on there. You don't want to get ants in your drawer or the kitchen. So we'll rinse that and give it some hot water. Now, we're going to go ahead and... Oops. See, I'm already making a mess, but that's the way videos usually go. Yeah, it's, uh, it's part of it. So we're going to do basically eight ounces, and you know I'm just I'm not going to use a measuring uh, cup to do this, um, but we're basically I'm going to put uh, approximately eight ounces of uh, 
Actually, let me show you guys. Almost forgot. Sorry, guys. Um, get ready for the actual recipe here. You guys can see that. Uh, Vietnamese coffee. And this is the way you actually spell it out in Vietnamese language. It's coffee suda. You got three tablespoons of Vietnamese coffee. Oops. Three tablespoons of sweetened condensed milk. And eight ounces of water that's boiling. And once again, like I said, um, if by chance your water is not boiling, it just won't be as strong or as intense of a flavor or caffeine level if, as if it was boiled. So it's not it's not a light for death situation. Let's just say you want it at least hot, if not boiled. Alright, so we're going to put about three ounces of this sweet condensed milk. That's about three ounces. Oops. And I probably should have put that in there before I put the ice. I think that's the way I've seen it done at the rest of time. <laughs> it's going to take a little less mixing on my part now. So, now what we're going to do, so that was our three ounces of sweet condensed milk. We're going to open this bad boy. I don't need to save the container um, because it's going to be used on a regular basis after this. Now it comes with some some kind of instructions. Remove the lid. Unscrew the screen. Some of them actually have. I know what the says unscrew the screen. This just has a handle. Some of them actually have like a, a center stem with threads that come out the bottom and then this goes down and you screw it and it tightens it and it does, actually does more of a press. But if, if you use hot boiling water, you know, just your finger action, it sits there and drips. So um, I'll go ahead and put that in there. I'll read that again later. But I know what it says. It was instructions for both types they probably make flip pipes. So, that's what they're talking about. Matter of fact, years ago, the one the one that I had was, uh, it did have the little screw like that. So with that, uh, we're gonna go ahead and put this on there. That's why you want the right, right size glass, about like so. And maybe I did more than three ounces of cream, but you know, it's okay. And this is made a bigger diameter so that it sits right there on the glass, okay? Now in here is where, and I actually like it without that stem that comes up in the center and you gotta put the coffee around it and stuff. It's just all open, I like that. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and open up our grind here. And one thing I like about this uh, Chong Wen is that it actually has a little pop top and which is so much nice i don't have to get a, a can opener oh my god now there is there's another uh, french french blend that's in the vietnamese markets and asian markets it's a yellow can and it says french french something with with hickory or no with the chicory <laughs> hickory chicory duck um but uh what a fantastic look. It almost smells slightly sweet. So that's terrific. Really like that. Wow, that's aromatic. And and honestly, any any can of coffee grind that you can buy in the store, I guarantee it, it's not gonna smell this good. It just won't. I don't care what Folgers or Maxwell House, they all smell great. Don't get me wrong, I love coffee. But this, in comparison to this, this is an unbelievable. So uh, I'm gonna get another spoon, instead of trying to dump it in there, because this one's got uh, condensed milk on it. I'm gonna get another spoon, I'll be right back. Make sure our water's close to boiling.
And like I said, I'm just I'm just guesstimating these things. You know, you know what about eight, you know, about what eight ounces is like, about what four ounces, and what three ounces. When it said it's, it basically said three tablespoons of the sweetened condensed milk. I know I poured it, um, and I probably probably got closer to five ounces, but it's going to be fine. So I'm going to put. Uh, notice mine are rounded. And once again, is it rounded? Is it level? So don't stress this out. Just approximate it. You're going to have a terrific cup of coffee. And the more you do it, hey Dennis, hey. the more you do it, the more you're going to find out, well, now I'll use a little less of this, a little more of that, and this and that. All right, so that was one. There's two. And there's three. I think I'm, I think I'm going to go with maybe one more, like that. Look. All right, so there we have it. Now you got your lid, and boy, you got to smell this. It smells terrific. Dennis, yeah, smell that. The caffeine. No, yeah. just the aroma of the coffee grind from the beans. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's just that's a terrific. That's from getting a little oven. chocolatey smell to it. It is a chocolatey smell. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, it, uh, Dennis pointed out a nice uh, a nice thing about the the grind on that is that it has a little bit of a chocolatey aroma coming at you. So, um, with that in mind, now, uh, Dennis is here with us. Dennis, of course, you know from some of our previous videos, and he's our, uh, our, uh, island reaction expert on many things, and, uh, you're going to see more of him. We haven't had his video yet. Uh, we want him to have a, a video about his, uh, Honda 1980... 78. Uh, 1978 Honda CT, CT, Trail 90. Trail 90. And, uh, brought it back to life. He's had it for 20 years and was 20 years old, uh, sitting in a garage for 20 years when he got it. And he just got it back after another 20 years of sitting <laughs> up north at his sister's. And, uh, so there have been four years basically in storage. It's only got originally how many miles? 500? Yeah, right now about 500. About 500 original miles since the 1978. And it's basically in mint condition. He just uh, did a little bit of this and that and started it up. Runs like a top. Got some new tires on it, so he's got new rubber. But they remade it. 20, and, 2021, they're coming out again. Yeah, in 2021, this uh, this same bike, trail bike, is going to be coming out again. It was made for basically hunters, uh, hunters and well, gatherers. That's, that's the name. It of was the new made one. for hunters and gatherers. The new one's called the the, hunter, the new one's called the Hunter 125. Oh, the new one's going to be called the Hunter 125. And it's basically a little trail bike, so it's not a full-blown motorcycle, it's not a moped, it's sort of right in the middle, and it, it doesn't apparently, it doesn't really look beefy, it looks like something you could probably ride on the sidewalk and get away with. Now, I don't know about the new 2021, what that's going to be like. Yeah, if, you can, if you can uh, cheat on the sidewalk with that, I don't know. Ten horsepower. This one here, you can cheat on the sidewalk and get away with it in most places. And, uh, but it's made, it's got a... You can go up, you can virtually climb hills like uh, one of those goats or one of those things, uh, the rams or what, they go up the mountains like this. You could go up like this. It's got that kind of a torque on it. Eight speed. It's got eight speeds. Eight speeds. So four, four high and four low. Four high and four low. So we're going to do a video on that down the road uh, for Dennis. And I look forward to that. Uh, I started one here a couple of weeks ago and it didn't really go anywhere. I got one little excerpt of when he was getting ready to put the rubber on. And it uh, it never went anywhere from there. And then he, I got busy, and he got busy on it, and I, yeah. I just missed it all. So that's we'll, a good we'll thing. We'll catch up and just and maybe show him doing some uh, uh, talking and explaining about it. It's a vintage bike, and it's in mint condition. It's yellow. Yeah, I saw it. I saw them on YouTube. Man. I think they had some that were orange and yellow for like that year, right? Uh, uh, red and yellow. Red and yellow. Red and yellow. So and he's got the yellow version. The new ones. It's going to be red and tan. We're going to have a choice of red and red tan. Red and tan on the new one for 2021. But they got all the ABS brakes, this brake, the keyless. All right. Stuff. So now we've got our, our condensed milk in there. We've got our ice. We've got our uh, approximately three uh, three uh, ounces, or three, excuse me, three tablespoons, just to make sure we got enough. I want to make sure we got enough because I got so much cream in there. I'm going to make sure we got just, a, just enough. Ooh. Okay. Put that there like that. Now we're gonna go we'll, we'll get our hot water and put it in there, and it's gonna start dripping like that. Okay. Be right back, guys. Oh boy. And Dennis is gonna tell a story about Vietnam, right? All right. <laughs> Are you gonna 
tell us any story, Dennis, about Vietnam? Uh, I couldn't even. <laughs> I mean, uh, you saw so much. I mean, some good, some bad, but some some memorable, and maybe certain songs, China certain songs, or certain foods, or China or, Beach. Uh, China Beach. What's about China Beach? Uh, big resort. <laughs> the big Beautiful. resort. Now, if you ever wanted to stop by here so they can see you, that's fine too. Uh, okay. But if you don't want to be seen, they can still hear you. Now, what about China Beach? Uh, it's an international resort now. But what was it when you were there? Well, that's where the Marines landed when they first went there. And it was the R&R &R Center. What's R&R? &R? Rest of relaxation. Oh, okay. R&R. &R. Rest. So that same structure, they turned it into a resort, or they built something brand new? Uh, over the years, it just, it's just been all built up, and it's, it's pretty much it. But it started out as an actual structure. Uh, yeah, well, there's a there's a place called uh, uh, Marble Mountain there. It's a, it's a, like a temple and a mountain. It's something to see. Uh, that's down the beach ways. Uh, anybody goes to China Beach goes to Marble Mountain. Okay. It's like a big cave and a mountain. And the BC used to hide in there. And what's the the BC? Viet Cong. Viet Cong. Uh, so you, we're talking to a lot of lay people here that may not know some of these things. Cause this uh, second, yeah. second, second speak for you and and, and second, you know, uh, oh, every, yeah. everyday knowledge. But a lot of people are, you know, unaware of this. Yeah. Including myself. I mean, I was right at that age where I missed going over, uh, and you were at that age a little bit older than me, so you you got in at the right time. The most fun thing about Vietnam is the traffic, the bicycles, the millions of them. Lots of bicycles, and lots of tricycles. Uh, bicycles and motor scooters, uh, little Honda. Now, do they have the tricycles there like they had in the Philippines? Yeah, they got them there. So they got tricycles there. And, um, Jeeps. Oh, now, tell us that story about the uh, the same bike like you got, the Honda's uh, trail bike, that he saw, or there's a picture that he's seen, of, of a family of about, I don't know how many people, eight or something like that. They're all on this bike like he's got, which we're going to make a video on this. Well, it, yeah, they uh, they usually ride the uh, the Honda Super Cup. Honda Super Cup, yeah. Which is similar to your average. Bike. They'll put a family. Or where's this called the Super Cup? Uh, no, that's a that's a trail the trail, but it's got the same engine. But uh, the Super Cup, they they sold a hundred million of them, and they brought that back. But over there, it's not unusual to see a family of five riding on them. And a family of five on one of these little. Yeah, bikes. Yeah, usually the husband. Which is slightly bigger than a bicycle, like a ten-speed bicycle. Husband, is slightly bigger than that. The husband sits. To, he's driving, and the wife sits sides out. They ride sides out, holding the baby. And then behind her is uh, two or three of the youngsters. Usually, the, they put them in order. Like and they'll be carrying some supplies with yeah. them also with yeah. the people on. Yeah. Them. Like a big sack of rice and stuff. And they just breeze along. And, oh, he even saw. He even saw some people on one of these. Carrying refrigerator. Yeah. Carrying refrigerator in one of these little things. On the back of it, yeah. So we're gonna do a, we're gonna do an episode on uh, his trail bike, which is like a I don't know how they do that because I uh, the center of balance. It throws the center of balance up. Because I brought back Well they water. they keep it balanced somehow. Well they're, they're it's like wearing flip flops. Yeah. Where you know, they can climb up ladders and yeah. walk on a tightrope with flip flops on it. They yeah. couldn't do that, but they grew up with it. So they this whole thing of balance and 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 just the uh, ergonomics of the body and how to how to adapt and stuff. That's just what they do. It's their second nature. Um, I got to get the hot water. Oh right. It's amazing to see they, what they can do with a small motor, you know, motorcycle. The amount of uh, usefulness they get out of them. They don't just take them back and forth to the store. They they can. It's not unusual to see them taking like uh, 80 ducks. A little Honda Super Cub with 80 ducks and, uh, you know, in little cages and netting or five hogs. Or well, we're going to have to keep this water up a little bit more, guys. Yeah, just, just go to YouTube and type in overloaded uh, overloaded uh, Vietnamese motor scooters. Go to YouTube, what you're on right now, and type in uh, overloaded uh, Honda scooters. Vietnamese. Vietnamese. Overloaded, and uh, and you'll see some of these things we're actually uh, uh, discussing yeah, with Denson though. It's entertaining. 
I actually had to heat some more water up. I've been reheating it so many times it evaporated. I started off with, I bought eight ounces. And um, I said eight ounces of water. We're not gonna get eight ounces of water. We'll probably get about okay, four ounces. Fine. Are you gonna come back and tell us some more, Dennis? Yeah, I just got it. Oh, he's got to get some hand sanitizer in these days of uh, uh, unprecedented caution that we need to use during the coronavirus. Uh, when I first started this uh, filming, actually President Trump was on live. He started uh, almost about 10 minutes before I started my live stream here. And um, I wasn't trying to compete with him, uh, and I, I couldn't in any capacity. But uh, I wanted to, uh, I already had this planned, and then I found out he's coming on. I wanted to watch that. At the same time, I wanted to get this done. And, um, and he'll be back tomorrow. And, and I'm gonna, you guys can watch what he's doing at the same time, or if he's still on live right now, or you can watch a replay of that. Uh, or you can watch a replay of us. <laughs> watch him live and watch us on replay. Um, but there's Dennis, you can see him now. He, he's got into the into the picture frame. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're in the picture frame. Oh, wow. Say hey, Dennis, everybody. Hey, hey, hey. That's Dennis there, our uh, pilot reaction foremost expert on most things mechanical. What? He's an actual genius. I, I got to tell you. He really is. He's just a genius of everything. That he, anything he wants to do, he just does it. Right. And uh, he doesn't try. He actually does it. You know. So yeah. let's get the hot water and um, let's get this coffee set out underway. Yeah, if you drink this coffee, you'll never eat another cup. Uh, very strong. I'm surprised they have Starbucks that have uh, something similar to this. They probably do. Does Starbucks have something like this? Oh, I'm sure they've stolen most of their yeah. most of their recipes or they're st taken from this original. Vietnamese coffee. They just modernized it and this and that. So yeah. we're going to go ahead and and uh, let me get another napkin here. Just in cool case. Oh, uh, cooler's doing great, but I don't have it pointed right on me because of that's not the other way. Because a lot of people from back east never heard. Now we're going to talk about the coffee right now. Man. So we're going to pour this in there. This is almost boiling water. So you pour it in fast enough to where it tops off. Like so. There it goes. And now, look at that. That's very hot. Notice I was using a, a pot holder to hold my Pyrex measuring cup. And, uh, and that's because now you can see it starts to drip. Now, what you do now, now I've got this, if you guys can't, I can't tip it, but it's it's just slightly, slightly below the lip right there, probably along the black level is where my water level is right now. And your grounds, some of them start to flow to the top a little bit. So you've got this little thing here, which has the perforated holes in there. It's got a little handle. Now, like I said, some of these originally, they actually had like a stem and a screw where you could screw it and like, like it's trying to put pressure, which this is just, you don't, this is dripping. You don't need to put pressure like a true French press that actually presses. You don't need that kind of pressure. This, the weight of this thing itself and a little bit of finger motion like that is going to do the job. Now, this will take a few minutes, so we'll have time to talk with Dennis about what something. What you get? Uh, I got it right up on the corner here. Oh, okay. So uh, we're fortunate to have a little Asian market up on the corner, and uh, yeah, an yeah. actual Vietnamese market and Vietnamese restaurant, Vietnamese uh, uh, dessert place, and it's all Vietnamese, Vietnamese hair cutters. So it's a little corner right there that's got everything Vietnamese. And uh, consequently, there, in this area here, there is a, a higher uh, population of Vietnamese in this area, which is nice. And other areas down the street, and down that street, and over here, and stuff. You got all these various uh, Vietnamese restaurants, which uh, pho, P H O, is a very popular uh, means soup in Vietnamese. Uh, Vietnamese pho is very popular, and this this place up where I, I got this. Uh, same owners that own that market actually own the restaurant, same people. So the food that they cook at the restaurant is the food they're getting from the rest from the actual market. So 
they sell it to themselves, so to speak. And um, so you're getting high quality uh, food, uh, high quality vegetables, and it's all Vietnamese people. So nothing's fake about it, and uh, it's just top of the line. And this place, part of my point was being is that there are certain days that they're, they're they're closed, certain days that are unique that normally restaurants would be open and this and that. But there are certain days that that parking lot there, they're actually parking across the street, up and down the street, and, and almost fighting to get in. And everything is six dollars. Yeah, and everything is a you know, six dollar. Yeah. How much is that six dollar? And uh, but. They, they basically have a really uh, high reputation here in the Valley of the Sun, and uh, everybody wants to go there. It's become a real trendy hot spot, and uh, people will, will will travel for miles to French, get here. French Indochina. French Indochina. French Indochina. Yes, uh, we, well, I already had that conversation with these wonderful people watching us. Thanks again for watching our interaction. Uh -oh. I was just explaining to them about, well, this, for example, this is actually a, a French press, a French coffee yeah. filter. They yeah, no French bread. And, uh, but yeah, the influence of that probably 100, 200 years ago, the French uh, being in Vietnam and all the influences that they've left behind. Oh, oh Saigon looks like New Orleans. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah if I was speaking about the architectural uh, influences of the French, like like Dennis just mentioned yeah. that. Uh, where's Old Saigon? Old Saigon. Yeah, like the, it it looks like you're in the French Quarter of New yeah. Orleans yeah. because of their influence. And that's just a little, so amazing. And you know the French Quarter dates back to probably like uh, the, uh, maybe the mid to uh, late 1800s at least or maybe pre. Yeah. And, uh, and that's probably the same time period when the French were in Vietnam and getting these influence. And why they were there I don't know. I haven't done my history. But um, the French were there for some reason. And uh, they were there for a substantial number of years to where they actually influenced the architectural, the culinary. Um, I don't know that they ever uh, influenced any religious barriers or anything like that, but they basically had a huge influence on so many different aspects of the Vietnamese culture um, that is, to this day, it's still there. It's still relevant. It's still prevalent. And uh, it, all the way from Vietnam over to here, it's still takes on that, that whole influence and essence of the French were here. Yes, you know. Uh, and it's just amazing. So this is going down a little bit. Uh, pick the top up, so. All right, so it's still floating. This is one of those things that you can, you can see our level here. I'm gonna get that a little bit closer. We wanna go up higher, to closer to the lip of the, the glass, but it's dripping. And this is one of those things, when you go into your Vietnamese restaurant, and you sit down, before you order your food, you want to order your drink. So right away you want to say, if you want a coffee sudé, you want to say, I'd like to get a coffee sudé. Because they're going to get that prepared first, and they're going to bring it to your table, and it's going to sit there and do its dripping in front of you, so that you have it before you get to your meal. So you actually have this probably sitting on your table already dripping, before you place your order for your food, for your pho, or whatever delicious Vietnamese items you might want to select. I like, they have some shredded pork and some grilled pork chops. And they use a fish sauce that's uh, got some vegetables, some carrots and garlic and different things in it. Um, and and you, you can just pour that on your rice and different things. And then they have like a sponge cake that's made of like some pork and egg and it's sausage or whatever. And it's, uh, it's sort of firm but soft and spongy. And, um, it's just terrific. And the whole combination, and then mint, some mint. Uh, they don't use uh, like the Mexican foods that use like uh, cilantro. They don't use cilantro. They'll use like a mint in, in there, and lemon grass and things. It's just got its own unique flavor. Don't you agree, Dennis? Oh, yeah. I mean, Dennis, like the Dennis has been going to Vietnamese restaurants for a long time. So that was my actual, my director and manager right there. Just checking in on me. So um, we're going to let this continue to drip. Dennis, do you have any more stories you want to tell us about Vietnam? How long were you there? Were you there like a year or six months? Or Yeah, a year. About a year? And uh, now he was a young man. Do you want to sh show the photo okay. of you want to show the photo of all those people and point yourself out that you have? Oh, yeah. That's on my phone. Yeah, it's got all those people and it shows you. Yeah. Well, 
Well, he can't show it right now, but he has got the picture of him when he was in basic training and, and all the different uh, you know, young cadets and stuff in there and point himself out. Looks just like he does now. He's just a little more weathered right now. He's like the old seaman that went out to sea. He came back. He's got a little bit of weather worn, worn on him. <laughs> and then he's the army team. Okay. But uh, yeah, Dennis, this is one of our great veterans that went over there and fought for our country years ago. Years before all these other people that have been trying to, uh, to come at the limelight of like, you know, show me some respect and, you know, thank you for your service and all that kind of stuff. When he came back from the war, People were uh, ostracizing him, probably, I and just disrespecting him. That's but, a great thing. And that was, a, that was back at a different time. But now people really respect the military. But when he came back as a young man, he didn't get a lot of pats on the back. But he's still there fighting for us and for your security and for your safety and for your lives. This man was doing it how many years ago? 50 years ago? More than that? Yeah. Stop the spread of communism. Yeah, that's a, I highly recommend to, if you want to take a number of our papers, don't go to, don't go to Cane, go to Vietnam if you want to really have an exciting vacation. Oh, what a beautiful place. Uh, I, I've never been there, of course, but um, what a beautiful place. You look at the pictures and just their, their islands, their land, their culture, their peace smiling faces, smiling faces, and, and so forgiving. I mean, I mean, you know, you know what happened with the war. I mean, they basically lost, but we didn't exactly win. So it was just sort of a, a tug of war, and, and everybody sort of lost, in my opinion. But we're, we're friends now. That, they're, they're smiles. And um, and that's great, and it, it's perfect. And one thing I can tell you, now I haven't been in for many years, but the Vietnamese uh, karaoke clubs, which they have, yeah. they love karaoke just like the Philippines. And they have basically your Philippine restaurants. A lot of them will be Philippine restaurants, and at, at a certain hour they'll they'll start karaoke. And now these around here they don't, but there are some that are just strictly karaoke cafes, Vietnamese, and they serve like this coffee sudad. And they serve some other uh, you know, famous Vietnamese drinks. Uh, one is called Chang Mui, which is a very salty uh, lemonade that's made from uh, aged, salted, aged, and buried uh, uh, lemons that are months and they turn black and they're salted and they, they make a delicious uh, uh, lemonade from that and it's iced and really good. Love that one also. But you go to these karaoke cafes and uh, before you, know, you could smoke and, and you know drink, maybe order a beer. Things, things have changed now, but uh, they're not as relaxed. But you could still go to these karaoke cafes, and the, they they love number one song. I guarantee it. Even to this day, I guarantee it. The fam the most famous song they're probably gonna want to sing. Now I'm talking about the Vietnamese people. Like, no, no, no. Their, their favorite song that the Vietnamese people want to sing in the in the American karaoke uh, cafes are. Uh, Welcome to the Hotel California. They love singing that song. That must be their they favorite. We are family. We, are we family. All my brothers, sisters, and me. They have certain, you know, famous American songs that they love to do. But there's a couple of them right there. All right, so now we've got that up to about the top. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. Uh, because this is still dripping, I'm going to set that there like uh, like that and sit on a napkin. So uh, it's dripped as much as it's going to really needs to drip. So now what I'm going to do, and you see, see that it's a slow process. That's why I say you order your drink, and they put it on your table, let it do its thing, and now you're going to go ahead and mix it. Now I might have been because of all my talking. I could have been uh, slightly taking longer to make this drink, but if, after it sit on your table for a little while, it's going to do this anyway. Like I said, I can see I get the little extra cream in there, sweet and condensed milk. But now it does need a little bit more ice now because all my ice melted. So now, do you want to try this? No. Okay. I got that. Take it. Oh. Stay away from real strong coffee. Okay, so what I'm going to do, 
I didn't want this to weigh, so I'm probably going to have it tomorrow. I'm not going to put any more ice in it because I don't want it to melt and get weaker. So, do you want to taste my uh, coffee soda? No. Okay, go ahead. No, I've got stuff. Well, thanks, Liz, for stopping over and sharing your story. Uh, so that there you have it. That's your coffee sedan. That was my double hour. Uh, and um, I'm going to get a straw just to take a little sip because I I'm just dying to taste how delicious did I make this. I have a feeling, even though I put a little extra to this milk when it needed uh, sweet condensed milk, I think it's going to be terrific. And especially if I was to take this and pour it on a fresh glass of ice. That would make it even perfect, because I did make it a little concentrated, I think. So, like I said, let me uh, get a little straw. And then I'm going to put this in, uh, cover it, put it in the refrigerator so I can have it later, because... And one thing I want, you know, I don't know if you can see it on here, but you do little, get a little bit of the uh, little tiny uh, pieces of the grind that you can actually visually see. It looks like there's, it's peppering, peppering out a little bit. And that's because it just, it, it's all natural. And it's a filter. And those are really tiny little holes in this, uh, this thin, this Vietnamese uh, coffee to death filter, or uh, press, French press. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and just take a sip of that so you guys can see my reaction. Island reaction to our coffee sudia. I'm going to freshen up my drink. We're going to come back and do a quick, quick review because um, there's really no process to pouring your glass of wine. <laughs> I don't know if you ever seen this quick. You ever seen this quick? This was that occasion. That was taken by. Uh, uh, that was in the Washington Post newspaper. Now where is this at? Washington D.C. Yeah, that was the dedication of the three men fighting statue. Yeah, was there, they, they got to put this oh, so this is actually a statue here. Yeah. Oh, okay. The three fighting men. The three fighting men in Washington, D.C. So that was taken by a photographer from the Washington Post. And I was showing these guys. I was driving my cab the next day, and I said, hey, can I get my picture? Is that you? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know that. Dennis has never shown me this before, but... Um, this is a famous statue, the three men, three, three, fighting, men. three fighting men in dedication. Washington. That was the dedication. dedication. This was the dedication of the statue in Washington, D.C., and Dennis was driving by, and he saw that. He was driving a taxi there in Washington, D.C., and he's already back from the war. And you can see him, and he's in the center here, uh, uh, kneeling down, uh, looking, looking at it. You see Dennis right there. That's Dennis as a young man. And that's at the dedication or some, uh, so, uh, so ceremony of the three men fighting statue in Washington, D.C. What, what year was that, Dennis? Jeez, about 35 years ago. Uh, mm. Well, 60 something or 70? Uh, seven, early, let's see, uh, early 70s? Uh, around 78. Maybe 78. But, oh, you could Google it and find out when was the, uh, the, uh, the ceremony for the. The three men dedication of, dedication of the three three men fighting statues in Washington D.C. Whatever date that was, that's Dennis right there on that same date, kneeling down looking at that. Dennis, thanks for sharing that, Dennis. Yeah, you never saw it. I never saw that. Yeah, that was in the, that was in the newspaper. I right? in my cab and I opened the paper. Hey, yeah, well, very very much uh, appreciate that. Yeah, I just stop by and just stop by and that. Well, guys, you saw it here on Island Reaction. I I didn't meet. I've known Dennis for probably 15 years, and I've never never seen that picture. So he shared it tonight with you guys here on Island Reaction. Dennis, thanks for doing that. Uh, yeah. I didn't know I that. Like, I like these people in the background. So this was in the newspaper, most likely. Yeah, it was in the Washington Post. It was in the Washington Post. Yeah. It says on the back you can't use it. Maybe you make the Yeah, you can't reproduce this picture, the copy. picture that he got from the, the press. So yeah, that's awesome, Dennis. Well, I'm going to go get the, uh, a straw. We're going to taste this, Dennis. Oh, right. And uh, if you want to taste all, I'll be happy to let you have a taste. And thanks again for sharing that photo, Dennis.
So, well, that was very exciting. I'm glad Dennis uh, shared that with us. So that was quite a little forward. Like I said, you could see a little peppering of the grind in here and stir it up a little bit and just take a little sip. Man, that is delicious. Absolutely delicious. It doesn't, because the, the sweet and condensed milk balances out the acidity and the intense coffee flavor, and, and you don't notice that it seems like, oh, if I drink this, it doesn't seem like something that's like, wow, I'm gonna be like really wired up if I drink this. It doesn't, it doesn't approach you like that. You don't, it doesn't hit you like that. Like, oh, I better be careful. It's so smooth, it's so smooth. I mean, talking about smooth, we're gonna be talking about that here in a second also. So, with that in mind, guys, I didn't make too much of a mess to have to clean up, and um, we're going to uh, we're going to cap this and take it in so that it's not wasted. And that's probably going to be what I drink tomorrow morning. Tomorrow's work day, so I'm going to have to uh, have something to start my engine, ladies and gentlemen. Start your engine. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to put a little cover over that, and uh, that's going to be terrific tomorrow. Because I'm not going to mix it with my wine. Be right back, guys. Alright guys, so I am back, and I'm going to go ahead and set some of this stuff aside here. So what we want to do is, uh, I didn't want this taking up the whole, whole screen shot. This up, it is a little bit messy. I'm sure once you get the hang of doing this, but I haven't done this for a while, so sweet condensed milk is really sticky, and you know you got the, the drippings from the little uh, filter. Yes. So it, it can be a little bit messy, but I've been sitting here for an hour. I'm sure if you, excuse me, if you're doing it more, uh, a little more functionally. <laughs> you're doing a little more functionally than me. PJ, if you're watching, how am I doing functionally? Over there at PJ's Cocktails? Hello, thanks for watching. Um, I don't know what happened to... Um, oh, what was his name? can't think of me. Somebody used to always watch us. We did a live stream about a week ago, I think, where you did some... 
cooking. I get some uh, stuffed bell peppers. I did mashed potatoes from scratch. And then I did some karaoke. All in the consecutive uh, with small breaks in between. So we ended up with probably four hours of live stream. And uh, I understand that I have been doing over an hour of live streaming on how to make <laughs> how to make Vietnamese coffee. Believe me, it doesn't take an hour to make Vietnamese coffee. <laughs> Unless you're drinking wine and trying to over explain things for something that's extremely simple. <laughs> but I want to make sure you don't miss anything. If you're uh, if you're interested in making some coffee soda, that's how you pronounce it. Coffee soda. And then if you want to say thank you in Vietnamese, you'd say, come on. You don't have to do this. That's a, an entire Say, Sabadi, hello. Sabadi, goodbye. Sabadi ka. Hello, Sabadi. Hello back to you. Sabadi ka. But, now you don't do that. But in Vietnamese it would be, come on. Thank you. Come on. Like, come on. What do you say? Come on. So, uh, coffee sada. And it's delicious coffee, and uh, you'll love it. If you like Starbucks, you're going to love that. You can pick it up at any Vietnamese restaurant. Forget Starbucks. Go get your uh, coffee sada, okay? Oh, are you going to make an appearance on our show? Well, thank you. Young, uh, young Ford is coming over to make an appearance on uh, Island Reaction tonight. You have to go around the other side so they can see you, Young. Back behind me. You have to go behind me. Over oh, this way. You got to get in the camera. Okay, so here's Young. That's Dennis's, uh, Dennis's better half. You just met Dennis again. This is uh, Young. Say hi, Young. Hi. This is Young. She has been very lucky here recently. Of course, you know, the casinos are all closed and everywhere. But she's been playing some scratch tickets and some print tickets here with the lottery. And she had a little bit of luck, so I want to say thumbs up for Young for doing that. And what's new? You're looking forward to uh, the casinos opening, right? And uh, any uh, any luck today? No good today. Well, I didn't have any luck today. Either. Now you know Vietnamese coffee, right? Yeah. Coffee uh -huh. Do you like it? Yeah. I just made a really long hour video of how to make it, uh -huh. and we threw some other stuff in there too. Oh, you want some coffee? It's very strong. Very, very strong. Would you like some? Oh! Alright, I'll be right back. Young would like to have some coffee for them. Stay right there and I'll get it for you. And if you want to tell a story, you can. Get your coffee for them. cold like the restaurant, but uh, we were making a video, so I got, no, you don't have to take that off, I got the straw on there for you. That's so that it doesn't spill on you. So you got the straw. So tell us what you think. Does it taste like the restaurant? There you have it. Now you've had this many times, right? Would you say this is almost as good as the restaurant, or almost? Better. Better? Uh -huh. There you have it from Young here, Valley Reaction. Um, in what ways is it better? Is it more uh, sweeter, or stronger, or a little bit sweeter? I did use a little extra sweetened in milk. Now you know this one. You know that one right there. So I used 
I use a little extra on that. Not, well, not on purpose, it just sort of happened. But I wasn't going to try to take it out. So, it, it ended up, now don't forget to bring my glass back right away. Because I only have two of those and I need it back. Um, or else you're in some big, big trouble. Big, big trouble. So that was young. Thanks for stopping by, young. So that was young. She was uh, having some of her coffee sit down. And she said it's actually a little bit better than the restaurant. So I'm really appreciative of that. Thank you, young. So that's it for our coffee sit down. Thanks for watching here at Island Reaction. Like I mentioned, that we are actually going to do a short little review here of this wine that I've been sipping on throughout this whole coffee venture. <laughs> Um, I don't think I've ever tried this before. It's a box wine. I have nothing against box wines. I've never tasted anything out of a bottle or a box that was any different. It's just a container, okay? Honestly. So this one, this one is called Provisions. It's a red wine blend. And let me get my glasses to describe. You can read it, but i, I got to read it while you guys can read it with me. So it says, Provisions, growers of everyday fine wines, produce everyday sippers from the world's finest grape-growing regions. Our, wine, our winemakers strive to keep you well-provisioned, thus the provisions name, with quality crowd-pleasing wines that pair perfectly with food and good company, of course. Enjoy. So that's their little motto uh, introduction. And the description of this particular uh, red wine blend is this dark red, this dark red blend has notes of vanilla, blackberry jam, dark chocolate flavors, and a velvety finish. And uh, this, this is about, unless it's on sale, it was about $27 for, uh... Well, you basically get about 20, 20 glasses. Alright, so this is about 5 ounces, so you get about 20 of these in that box about $27. I didn't pay that. I got it on a remarkably good sell for $17. So, uh, back to their their description. I have to say, it's pretty, pretty accurate. Now, I'm no wine connoisseur. Probably never will be. Probably don't care to be. Um, it interests me at times. And, uh, but I, I do like to I do like to see a comparison and accountability for what they're saying and what I'm getting. And, um, and for what they said on the description of it, of the flavor, I don't know that I really, I don't really hue on my palate a chocolate or a vanilla, honestly. But the one thing I can say, the velvety finish. The velvety finish, it's not dry, it's very wet, it's velvety finish. It sort of just rolls right off your tongue and palate. It's very wet in your mouth. There's no bite. Um, it's very smooth. Now, it is about 13% alcohol. Like Most wines are about 13%. Some are 12, some are more. But, you know, about, I would say 12 to 13% to 14% is probably right there. I mean, it's probably 99% of wines. And um, I find it very palatable because it is a little more expensive than some of these you know, bigger bottles you could get of Livingston or whatever some of these brands are that you've seen around for years. And they're high produced, and I don't know how they I don't know how they do their thing, but um, the price. I think generally with wine you get what you pay for. It's not always like that with everything, but with wine, I definitely think you get what you pay for. Um, 
But it pays to do a little bit of, you know, reading. All the labels generally tell you a lot about the wine. And uh, this one certainly did. And that's, hey Jim, this one certainly got me to, uh, to want to try it out. And I never tried it before. But that, I wasn't excited about the chocolatey overtones or undertones or the vanilla hints and hues. Uh, I'm trying to use some words like David used to make it sound like I really know what I'm talking about, but I really don't. But um, the one key thing it described to me was a velvety finish. And I've been looking for a word for, that's the type of wine that I like, is smooth, wet, velvety. Not watery. It's a much thicker finish than a water. You know, like if you were to compare, let me let me describe it like this. If you were to take a glass of water, a drink of water from whatever container, and then compare that to drinking like a drink of uh, Gatorade. Now, of course, the Gatorade has flavor and it has sweetnesses and things like that. But I'm not talking about that as far as overtones. I'm speaking of, let's say, the dryness or the wetness of Way it fills in your mouth. Um, water fills like water, right? And Gatorade, if you were to describe, how does it feel different in your mouth than water does? You would say, well, that Gatorade, it's it's heavier. I'm not talking about taste or sweetness or flavor. I'm talking about the fill, actual substance laying in your mouth. And the, and the heaviness of it, the weight of it, and uh, the wetness of it, and or the dryness of it. And so, comparing water to Gatorade, you would say that um, Gatorade just seems it's wetter, it's smoother, it's got kind a of slicker finish the way it rolls around in your mouth and tongue and your palate. So that's what I'm talking about with wine. I, I had wines that were really dry and sharp in, in the, the flavor and the way they hit you, your aroma and all that kind of stuff. It just, some of them you smell it and, and you don't even want to taste it after you smell it. it it's just that unpalatable in, in your aura, aura, aura senses. Um, but this actually described itself really well. And had I not been around so much other coffee flavors, <laughs> coffee aromas, and all these things, if I was actually sitting down and just really going to appraise this wine and do a, a better review than what I've done on it, I might have picked up on some of that chocolatey and that vanilla stuff they're talking about. I honestly, this, this right here has a real chocolatey sense to it. So, um, it's it's just not fair to try to, to say that I can pick those out of that. But I can pick out its, uh, its velvety texture. And uh, it does, it's not sharp. It doesn't bite me. It doesn't, uh, when, you, when you breathe it in, it doesn't do anything to your uh, nasal cavity. It makes you feel like that, like some things do. No, it's just totally smooth. And... Um, and that's can be a little bit dangerous because you might end up consuming a little bit more. The nice thing about some things that bite you a little bit is that you're a little more cautious and you're a little more uh, focused on, well, I'm going to have a little bit more. Uh, but this one here, it's just so smooth that you, you might forget, well, how many of these five-ounce glasses have I had? Because it just keeps going down. It's so good. But... Uh, well, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, you are watching I'm in Reaction. I'm Cameron Cooper. Uh, thanks for watching our uh, pretty much demonstration on our very, very long demonstration and introduction to uh, Vietnamese coffee, coffee sudat. Uh, once again, um, it was made with uh, true grown and blended uh, Vietnamese coffee from Vietnam, uh, Trung Nguyen. I believe you pronounce it that way. Very aromatic. And you use your press, your French press, 
uh, drip and your sweetened condensed milk and ice and uh, have a little bit of patience with the experiment like I did. I, I know that, you know, Young's having that one right now, but I, I know that it was a little sweet, a little on the sweet side. It should have been a little less sweet in the snow, a little more ice. Uh, I was uh, a little over over uh, over schedule on preparing and it's thinning and tasting and all that because of all the, the extra dialogue in the video. Um, but uh, had it been made like bam bam bam, it would have been uh, it would have been perfect, except for the fact that I think I made a little bit too much sweet in this milk. But some people probably like it like that. But nevertheless, I think if you got one in the restaurant, I think it would have been a little more coffee flavor and a little less sweet, but still very smooth. This one was a little too sweet, in my opinion, because I did taste it. It was good, but um, it was a little on the sweet side, in my opinion. But I think that if I had taken that glass there, got the fresh glass, loaded it up with ice to the top, poured, mixed that up good in the glass that I just made, poured that in there, I think that you know, by the time you stir it around a little bit, that would have toned it down a little bit, would have been about perfect, maybe. Or I could have made maybe uh, out of that one glass I did that the ice all melted, I could have taken two fresh glasses loaded with ice, poured that in there, it would have filled up both my glasses because of all the ice content. And both of those glasses would have been about perfect, I think. So I could have made two out of that one that she just took. And um, I hope she's able to go to sleep tonight. Because that, that was powerful. You saw all the extra scoops I put in there, too. Oh, I am Kevin Cooper, and you have been watching on Reactions of Coffee Sudan, Big Me's Coffee, with a side shoot of Provisions Wine Review. And uh, we appreciate you being here. If you have not clicked and subscribed, please do so. Give us a thumbs up, like, and uh, we'll see you again for something down the road here. I have no idea. We don't have anything planned right this second. But we've got a lot of videos that we've recently uh, produced out, uploaded. And uh, please, if you haven't checked them out, please check them out. Uh, sometimes I get a little talky. And... Uh, they run over. They run over schedule sometimes, but we try to give you good content. And uh, and I know for a fact the last time I did some karaoke singing, it was all country songs. I know for a fact I think I was hitting every note almost right. I didn't get sloppy. Like that one time, if you watch the video where I'm doing karaoke in the yellow long sleeve T-shirt, yeah, watch the end of that. <laughs> There's a little bit of slurring and stumbling on that, but I guarantee you on this last video. Um, that was all country here just about a week ago. I hit every note, guys. I guarantee you. Now, I'd love to do some songs right now, but I just can't. Because it takes a lot of energy, and that's a whole other hour right there. And um, a little bit tired today than yesterday. So, no singing today. But we'll see you in the next couple of weeks if we can hit you guys up with some karaoke. Try to do some requests. Uh, we will when we can. I would say with the, with, within at least a month, we'd like to be able to do some karaoke where we can interact and take some requests. Uh, Apollo. Johnson Apollo. That's who I was trying to think of. I haven't seen him around. So uh, I hope we haven't lost you, uh, Johnson Apollo, on our live stream. And everybody that's watching, uh, Charles and PJ and LJ and Mom and Dad and and my brother Brett and everybody that's watching, uh, you know, thanks for watching us and uh, we'll be back again. So I'm going to go around the other side and turn this off. I don't have a manager or a director today, so I'm going to do it myself, guys. Thanks again for watching us here at Island Reaction. Got to figure out how to turn it off, guys.